Welcome to part six, I think it is. Yes. All right. Hope y'all enjoy more, more sexy, what's it? What's sexual it? education. Sexual education. Q&A. And Q&A. Sex video. What they don't teach you in gym class, is it? <laughs> Here's how to throw a dodgeball. Here's how to play with real balls. No, okay. <laughs> it's not gym yeah. class, fuck. No, it's like sex ed. <laughs> Back from the video, make sure y'all subscribe, like the video, and uh, we'll get right into the questions. Um, how would you approach talking to your own child or younger sibling about sex? Oh, so I am an only child, mm. so I don't have any younger siblings, unfortunately. Um, but I come from a big family of a lot of cousins, mm. and they're basically my siblings, kind of thing. So I've had the joy to educate them all before. Um, so I've kind of gone about it with just being open about my own experiences, but yeah. tailored to like what age level they are. Mm -hmm. Obviously, like, you know, if if they're having a crush on somebody, like if they have a crush on somebody, then I'll talk about a similar experience of like a time that I've had a crush on somebody or like, you know, like I'll tone it down a little bit to just talk about what they want to talk about. Um, if they say like, I really want to kiss this guy, but I'm super nervous, then I'll kind of relate to them on that level and be like, I remember a time that I was nervous when I kissed, it, like when I was first kissing a guy. Um, you know, if they're, if they're a little bit older or if they're younger, which, you know, that's when you should really focus more on the be safe, um, you know, that there's other alternatives other than sex that you, you know, you can try. Mm. Um, make sure that you're with the right person, make sure that you're not going to regret it, um, because that's really important for younger kids. And by younger kids, I should specify that it's like above 13, hopefully, is where you're talking about like actual sex stuff, because if it's younger than 13, then you should have like a little bit of a concern because like some 13 year olds don't even have their fucking periods yet. Yeah. Um, so. Which is like really dangerous, which means they might not know about contraceptives. Yeah. Um, they might not know that since they haven't had their period yet, that you know, you can still get pregnant if you haven't had your period yet because when you have your first period, guess what? You're, you know, fertile for the first 14 days. And then, oh, shit. 14 yeah. Days. And then like 14 days later, you have your period. So a lot of people are like, I haven't had my period yet, so I don't have to use condoms. It's like, no, you haven't had your period yet, but you could be fertile right now. So fucking use condoms or like some type of contraceptive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and yeah, just like kind of play off of what they're telling you, what they're going through, what experiences you had at their age, because obviously each person is different. I lost mine at 15. It's like, how do you make them open to want to talk to you? That's, that's, that's what I mean. Okay, so like, okay, so as a parent, my parents were super open with me. Okay, how did um, they make it open with you? They I'm, never, they never sat me down, and they never had like that awkward, here's the birds and the bees kind of thing. Like my grandma did that with my mom. My mom was like, that was the most fucking awkward thing ever, um, and it wasn't really informative. So she really wanted to like change it up with me. So when she had me, it was kind of the same thing. Like any questions that I had, she offered, to, she always offered like, hey, is there anything that you have any questions about this kind okay. of thing? Like, okay. I know you're going through this. I know you have a little crush on this boy. Do you know about this? Or like, what are you wanting? And then she gave you the, the opportunity to- Yeah, and I would it. ask questions okay. and, um, and then, as soon as I kind of got uncomfortable, she would say like, do you want me to continue? And I would either be like, yeah, I really want to know more information about this. Or if I, if I didn't, then I'd be like, no, I'm uncomfortable. Please fucking stop right now. I <laughs> want to die. I'm humiliated. But like, no, it was never that bad because I was always like, oh, like I really, I'm really intrigued about this. And um, for parents out there who are watching this video or like who are about to be parents, or whatever, or like getting to that age where your kids are gonna wanna know or should know about sexual education and how to be safe and that kind of stuff. Um, don't fucking lie to them about anything. Don't sugarcoat that stuff. Give them variety, give them a lot of information um, and educate them to the point that until they say, I'm, I'm uncomfortable or like, okay, I think I understand or like, I don't want any, any more information because you can never like over-educate your kids. The worst comes to worst, like you just have a really smart fucking child that's gonna help the other kids around them figure things out and like i think that's a, a really big thing too yeah. back in the day kids would help educate themselves like oh well my mom told me that you know wee wees get hard and it's like 
my mom told me that's called the penis and that's called a boner. Like, yeah, all right. <laughs> um, what if he doesn't want to use condoms? Um, if you absolutely want to use condoms and he doesn't want to use condoms, don't have sex with him because yeah, that's, that's not respectful. That's just like the straight up like one version of it. If he's refusing to use condoms, then it's not consensual. Yeah. Because it's consensual under these guidelines and if he's refusing those guidelines, then it's not consensual in the way that you want it to be. Yeah. Um, so don't have sex with him. But also you can, if you're comfortable with not using condoms and looking into other alternative no, contraceptive plan methods, B, not even plan B. Like I agree plan B is you know useful for if you have so, an accident, but yeah. I don't think you should rely on plan B as like, a, I'm gonna let him come inside me and then I'll just take plan B because those chemicals like, like obviously chemicals are bad for your body and like that kind of stuff. But like over a long period of time, mm -hmm it can be really harmful for your body because it's basically, it's like killing all the sperm, killing your eggs, um, sure. it's fucking with your hormones kind of thing. So I, if you're gonna go long-term contraceptive method, then try, um, ask your doctor about birth control pills, um, hormone, like they, they give you like different hormones kind of thing to yeah, yeah. Um, make it seem like you're not on your period, like trick your body into not having a period kind of thing. Um, you can get a patch, you can get a, a needle that lasts like either one full year of not having your period Period, or you can, I think you can get- things you put inside your, like... So I actually have the IUD now. Okay, um, so that's something that I just got done like this semester, mm. uh, back in October. And if you, if you wanna have like an alternative, like an IUD, definitely talk to your doctor about it. I wanted one for like a long time. Um, since last year, basically, I found out about them and I was like, wow, these are really cool. Like I had never even heard of these before. Mm -hmm. So basically they're, they're, they're these like little, like maybe smaller than that, things that the doctor will implant into your cervix. Mm -hmm. um, and there's two different kinds. There's the hormonal IUD and there's a copper IUD. The copper one is basically like this little T-shaped, it, it looks like that kind of thing, um, but it's very small and it's kind of got wire, uh, or yeah, copper wire um, looped around it a bunch of times and it's not like, it doesn't do anything to your hormones, but there's a lot of different information that you have to get from your doctor if you're considering a copper IUD. Um, I was considering one just because I was wondering if I could stay on my birth control pills as well as have an IUD, which I know it sounds a little bit over, you know, pre like over cautious kind of yeah, thing yeah. because first of all, birth control pills are like 99.8% accurate and IUDs are 99.9% .9 accurate. Um, so it's kind of like, all right, Gina, we get it. You don't want a kid right now. <laughs> Ain't nobody got time um, for that. Ain't nobody got time for that. <laughs> I, I, I'm in school. I need to graduate. Um, but so I, I was like thinking about maybe I get a copper IUD as well as continue on my birth control pills. And my doctor was kind of like, no, that's that's unnecessary. You don't need to do that. Um, like you can if you want, but like it's definitely unnecessary. And you know, it's just, you don't need to do that. So the, the copper one creates a hostile environment so that the sperm can't latch onto the egg. egg. Um, yeah, the egg. But the some of the negative side effects is that you have oftentimes, you have more severe cramping during your period, a heavier flow, which, Man, periods suck already. Like, I don't want to have to change my tampon or my pads like more often, um, or like empty my diva cup because like I stopped using pads and tampons when yeah. I found a diva cup. Which, like, if you guys have never heard of it, please look into it. It environmentally friendly, you know, saves the saves the planet. Yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, I, I just like who wants a heavier period, let alone a period at all, and the cramping. And it makes it worse. So um, definitely look into that. But that's like a good option for people who can't take um, hormonal contraceptives because their like their body's allergic to it or they can't handle it. Like definitely talk to your doctor. That's what I want to suggest. Um, but for the hormonal IUDs, which is the one that I got put in, so I don't take birth control pills anymore, which is good because like I would often um, not take it at the same time every day and for birth control pills you have to take it at the exact same time within like half an hour each day um and there's a lot of really negative side effects to birth control pills i've been on birth control since i was 16 and like i've taken breaks intermediately when i'm not having sex yeah. um like long distance it sucks but yeah, yeah. 
that's the reality. So I did a, a bit on birth control and it, uh, some side effects might include like weight gain, um, depression, higher levels of like anxiety. It, um, it can make your period lighter, which is good. It regulates your period, which is good. Like these are all pros. Um, a lot of people say that the cramping is less severe, right? So that, that those are all good things. But like what I wanted was, um, if I ever forgot to take my birth control pill, then I didn't want to be stuck with like nothing to protect me. Um, also, if you go on antibiotics, birth control pills are, you know, null yeah, and void. Yeah. So you are not on any contraceptive if you're relying on birth control pills when you're on antibiotics. Just letting everybody know, you can get pregnant more likely than um, if you're just like on birth control. You know, because it's like it's like not using a condom at all. You're just getting sperm inside of you if you're on antibiotics because it cancels out birth control. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so hormonal IUDs, really important. I know this is gonna be like a really long explanation, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, super passionate about it though. Um, hormonal IUDs, there's little to no periods every month. I haven't had a period yet. Um, and definitely my roommates who are on IUDs, they've had a couple of periods and like maybe slight spot, uh, spotting, mm -hmm. but you can experience no periods at all, which is like, hell yes, no thank you. Um, cramping is like non-existent for me, which like when I'm supposed to have my period, like the week that I'm supposed to have my period, no cramping, no period, um, no hormonal like side effects. So like when it's just pure um, estrogen that's, uh, or testosterone that's in your body or whatever, yeah. Um, then you don't have like all the other chemicals that they mix in with the birth control pills, which is really good. Um, the birth control pill, also another side effect is that you can have blood clots, which is like really bad. And with the IUD, you don't have any chances of blood, blood clots. The clots. Um, but there is also some negative side effects to having an IUD in general, is the fact that the insertion hurts like a fucking bitch. Um, I didn't cry or anything, and it, honestly, it's not as bad as like you would say like a tattoo is. Because, well, yeah, because tattoos can last like a long time, right? Yeah, like my yeah. boyfriend just got a sleeve done, and it took six and a half hours just to like do a sleeve kind of or half a sleeve. Yeah. And my IUD insertion took 30 seconds, yeah. so it was like an extreme amount of pain for like 30 seconds, and then it was done. The insertion was done. Um, for me, the clamp didn't hurt to like open up your vagina a little bit so that they can see in. The part that hurt was like when they had to like grab onto my cervix so that they held it steady and it's like a really sensitive thing and they just like had to like clamp it to hold it still while they put the needle in or not needle I shouldn't say needle <laughs> sorry um, while they put like the stick in yeah, yeah. Um, but I did experience like really painful cramps the worst I had ever had in my entire life I had experienced really severe cramps for two days after I got this in um, and it was like debilitating cramps kind of thing. Yeah, like yeah. I had to go back to, uh, to the clinic, ask for a doctor's note to like, excuse me from classes for the rest of the week. Like that's how bad it was for me. But you know, for 30 seconds of really extreme pain and two days after of like debilitating cramps, um, which like heat packs helped and ice cream helped yeah, um, and all that kind of stuff, it's fucking worth it. You don't have your period. Um, these things last five years. Like mine lasts five years. So I have to just go take it out or like get a new one put in in five years. Mm -hmm. And like, bitch is gonna be not going to be putting one back in after that. <laughs> but um, I'm, I'm definitely like happy that I don't have to have a period for the next five years. No cramps, um, like no problem, no pregnancy. Um, yeah, so like I'm, I'm, I'm thinking like if you outweigh pros and cons, yeah. it's worth it, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Hope you all enjoyed that mad informative yes, answer. Yes, absolutely. I'm sorry about the language. <laughs> it's all good. Okay. Educated. Right. Look out for part seven. Seven. Jeez. We're gonna make it a ten, ten part video. Ten part video. If we run out of if we run out of topics, we'll just come up with more. All right. Much love. Peace and joy. Namaste. Bye guys. And if it doesn't feed you, don't water it. Deuces. Have some sex. I'm pulling up, I'm right up on the avenue. She like to fuss and fight, she like to give me attitude. Let her diamonds drip, get them diamonds fluid. Mission impossible.